Hi, I'm Pete Holloway. I'm a retired financial advisor and a retired certified financial planner. And as always, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to On Money. My guest today is Betsy Delk. She's the executive director of the West Liberty Foundation. She's a native of St. Clairsville, got her undergraduate degree in economics from Miami, and her law degree from William & Mary. She practiced law for about eight years in the field of civil litigation and has been the uh, director here for two full months. Pleasure. She's the mother of three very successful children, and I, 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 you've, you've done a great job with them. It's been fun watching them grow up. Um, what's the purpose of the West Liberty Foundation? Well, first I need to correct you. I want to make sure we clarify Miami University. Oh, what did I In say? case, you said Miami, but okay. I just want to make sure everyone okay. <laughs> knows that it is the one in Ohio that right. was established well before the one in Florida. Okay. Just thought I need to clarify that. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of the West Liberty Foundation is to raise, invest, and steward private funds for the benefit of the university mm -hmm. and to create greater opportunities for students of all backgrounds to pursue higher learning. Okay. Um, the foundation, normally you see foundations, and West Liberty is obviously a charitable organization, but it does have some state money behind it. Uh, is that ever an issue? Uh, I think it can be. I mean, perhaps uh, the whole reason that the foundation exists, there's sort of a general reason, and then there's something more specific that I can share with you. Uh, but generally speaking, when the university began, all of its funding was provided by the state of West Virginia mm -hmm. uh, through appropriations from the legislature. Mm -hmm. And then as time has gone forward, the amount of that state support has declined. So and so to. that's where the foundation steps in to help provide private support to support the university. Bit of a stop, yep. Um, and what's the history of the foundation? Well, uh, as I said, generally speaking, it is there to provide that additional support that the state is mm -hmm. not able or does not provide any longer. But I had the great pleasure just last week to have lunch with Clyde Campbell. And of course, anyone who has heard of West Liberty University has heard of Dr. Clyde Campbell mm -hmm. and knows what an important figure uh, he is uh, in the history of the university uh, and continuing to today. Uh, so he shared with me that in the 1960s, um, then President Paul Elbin, who served as president of the university for, I believe, 30 years, 30 and years yeah. for whom the library on campus is named, uh, wanted to establish an interfaith chapel on campus. And this was going to be a problem with the West Virginia legislature because they did not want to fund a, an interfaith chapel on campus. And so Clyde shared with me that that is when the foundation was initially established mm. because uh, Paul Elbin said, well, then I'll raise the money myself. And he did, and mm. hence the beginning of the foundation in 1964. That's great. Uh, how big is it? Uh, this is all public record, so. Absolutely. So uh, currently, the, the market has its ups and downs, but <laughs> currently we have around $23 million That's a nice uh, number. In, in investment in the foundation. And again, starting from zero, liter literally. Now, um, your job is to raise the money. Uh, there's $23 million out there. How does that money get allocated? Who's in charge of that? It's not you, is it? Or, no. Well, as far as the money that is currently in the foundation, mm -hmm. we manage over 300 different funds. So there are funds established. We could have the Pete Holloway Memorial Scholarship that was Hopefully established. Hopefully not memorial. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We can do. Do you know something? <laughs> uh, the uh, Pete Holloway Honorary Scholarship. There you go. So anybody can start their own scholar. Is there, there would have to be a minimum. Uh, for an, uh, what, we, what we strive for is an endowed mm -hmm. uh, scholarship. And obviously the point of that is that there would be enough money there so that um, the investment and the money that that throws off is enough to fund the scholarship so that mm -hmm. it will be in perpetuity. Okay. Now, $23 million is a lot of money, but you're going to be paying out typically, what, 4% of that on an annual basis uh, as of a certain date. So roughly that would be, uh, at $25 million, it would be for <laughs> it would be around a million dollars. So that money, uh, and let's just use a million because we can all do that in our head, it won't, won't be that much. But again, how is it allocated? Do people say we need money? Uh, th this is money beyond the named scholarships, which will have specific designations for that money. But there will be other monies that 
are spread out, or whether it's over sports or art or whatever? Sure. So much of the money is in scholarships. Mm -hmm. And of course, for every scholarship, there are guidelines and there are people who are dedicated to finding the students that are going to receive those scholarships, mm -hmm. making sure that they meet the guidelines, making sure that the donor's intent is recognized. Mm -hmm. um, there are other funds that benefit, for example, we have the Hilltopper Athletic Club Fund. So those are funds that are directed to athletics. The fund manager of that fund is the athletic director. Mm -hmm. um, so he works in consultation with the foundation to decide the best use of those funds in any given year. Uh, by the same token, so there are funds that are scholarship funds, but there are also funds that are dedicated, say, to the support generally of the theater department. Mm -hmm. So there may be things that the theater department needs, um, things for sets, uh, sometimes uh, funds of that nature for an academic program, support travel, uh, support things for faculty. So there are all our disbursement reports like a mile long, and it can be anything from getting new uniforms for an athletic team to providing uh, travel for uh, professors to attend a conference. Okay. Um, and there would have to be a board of directors that oversees it and makes sure that you're sticking with your fiduciary duties and so forth. Absolutely. We do have a board of directors at the foundation, mm -hmm. currently headed by John Dolan, who is an alum of the university. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of wonderful community leaders that make mm -hmm. up our board of directors, uh, all very involved and all very caring about the university and seeing that the very best is done at the foundation so that we can support the university. Now, you'd mentioned some projects funding a sports team or the theater department and so forth. Uh, although you're relatively new to the position, there may be some things that you're particularly proud of funding. Uh, could you give us a couple ideas of some of those projects? Sure. So, uh, and of course, this is not me personally because mm -hmm. I am so new, but the work of the foundation over um, the last several years, things that are notable, things that you see when you're on campus um, that come to note are the uh, West Family Stadium, the mm. West Family Athletic Complex, and the Belmont Savings Bank indoor athletic facility, athletic training facility. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that one can see and they are quite evident when you're on campus. They of course benefit our student athletes, they benefit our fans and the people that come and attend sporting events and also to, they benefit the community to the extent that those facilities are available for other uses. Offhand, do you have an idea uh, of how much money is going into scholarships generally across the board? You, I'm too new to answer that okay. question. Okay. It's a lot. <laughs> I'll bet. It's a lot. So a lot of... A lot uh, of well, I guess I can say so that um, we, in addition to all the individual scholarship, name scholarships, like mm -hmm. the Pete Holloway scholarship <laughs> that I'm anticipating upon your death. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> we, there are unrestricted scholarships um, at the university. There are the Elbin Scholars, and so we help to fund those. And uh, I think in a typical year, the foundation gives over $100,000 to support those scholarships. Well, that's great, because uh, college is not cheap these days. No, it is not. Um, Okay. But if you're looking for an affordable education, oh, yeah. West Liberty is the place to it go. It cer certainly would be. Um, and uh, the other question is, your job is principally to raise money, going, Correct. going, grabbing people's wallets and stuff. Um, how can a person contribute, and and what can they contribute? Well, just about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, the most simple. Examples are cash, cash check, credit card. We take all those. <laughs> um, a lot of oftentimes gifts of stock. Many people choose to support the foundation with their required minimum distributions from their retirement accounts. Can you go over that? Because that's slightly complex. <sighs> I, I can. You Why don't you go over oh, okay. it, Pete? Um, well, people that hit a certain age must begin to withdraw money from their retirement account. In a lot of cases. Uh, people that I was working with said, I don't need that money, and all it's doing is m I'm paying extra taxes on it. Right. So it can be up to $100,000 can be directed directly to a charitable institution, and it goes in there, there's no tax consequence and so forth. So they're able to take this money, which they have to take out, and put it to a good cause, and obviously the West Liberty Foundation is a good cause. Is the best cause of them all. Mm. <laughs> I, I recently spoke with a woman who 
graduated from West Liberty. She was a teacher in Baltimore area for maybe 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so out of her required minimum distribution, she's funding a scholarship in her own name mm -hmm. um, that has just recently become endowed, meaning that it has grown to the point that now it will live on, hopefully in perpetuity, and provide a scholarship to a student at West Liberty till the end of time. So. Mm -hmm. And one other thing uh, that people don't, people normally don't think of the required minimum distribution, but it's also life insurance. This is in unusual cases, but should someone feel that they have too much in life insurance, just change the name of the beneficiary and absolutely we benefit from life insurance policies annuities um, I was just reading today uh, this took place uh, a couple of years ago but a group of alumni who were members of the wrestling team while they were here at West Liberty um, all took out life insurance policies to benefit the university hmm. and that is going into the wrestling fund that will help fund things for the wrestling program and if you pay attention to our athletics you know that our wrestling program does quite well for itself uh, and competes uh, nationally mm -hmm. every year so it's great to well, see. That's great. Uh, do you have other thoughts or anything that I've left out? Well I have a very big thought <laughs> okay. and that is that something very important on the foundation calendar is coming up uh, next month it is our topper day of giving mm -hmm. which will take place on wednesday april 5th and we invite everyone who has a connection to the university whether that is you attended west liberty your child attended west liberty you like to watch the basketball team play you're a member of our community and you're an employer and you want to see graduates coming out of the school that you'll be able to employ uh, you like me and you want to help me out, uh, <laughs> Day of Giving. So Day of Giving is a 24-hour giving campaign, uh, primarily online. Mm -hmm. You go right to our um, Day of Giving page. It's easy to find. What, what is the website? Uh, WLU Foundation backslash Day of Giving, I mm -hmm. believe. Okay. Uh, it's not, if you get to the w, WLU website, you can find us. Uh, you can go directly to the Foundation website, and we're connected in there. Um, but that's just a fantastic day for us. Our goal this year is to raise $300,000. Wow. This is our seventh wow. annual day of giving. Mm -hmm. It has grown every year. Uh, the big leap in growth took place after about the third year. In the early years of the day of giving, all funds were directed to our annual campaign. But in, I think, year four, day of giving was gamified and a number of micro campaigns were created so that various programs across campus could compete with one another mm -hmm. to see who could raise the most money on day of giving. So that includes uh, our athletic teams, the theater department, the biology department, and each year more and more groups across campus say we want to have a micro campaign too. Mm -hmm. So one of the roles that the foundation has that we've been working over the past couple of months with Pete is well aware of this because he has been uh, a target of one of our asks but we provide try to provide matching donors for all of these campaigns so for example the College of Liberal Arts Pete Holloway is our matching donor for that college uh, he's provided a match so every donation on day of giving to that college matched by Pete uh, to um, a point a t uh, up to <laughs> a point <laughs> Let's make sure that Pete's entire match is used. <laughs> but we also, so we have matches for uh, the athletic teams, different uh, groups across campus, and the winners, so we keep very careful track. Kyle Lutz, who's our, ad, our office administrator, keeps very careful track of all the money that's coming in, along with our finance administrator, uh, Jenny McFarland, and they keep running totals throughout the day. And so the top three campaigns in number of donors and number of dollars raised each get a little sweetener from the foundation so yeah. the top in each category gets an extra fifteen hundred dollars to their campaign thousand dollars five hundred dollars so that is a lot of fun and just one example is riley shank who's our volleyball coach probably for the last three weeks Every day we get multiple notifications of gifts that have been made already to the volleyball program for Day of Giving mm. because they've engaged their players, the players have engaged their family and friends, so we get donations from all across the country on a daily basis for the volleyball program. Mm. 
Um, our theater department, I think, was one of our winners last year. So it's, it's a lot of fun to see the creative ways that they tap into uh, people who really appreciate their particular program. And of course, the Day of Giving, um, you, there are 364 other days that they can That's give to you. Right. Someone might have a timing issue where a CD does not mature until August. They can give that money at that time if that's their, their, uh, we their choice. We accept money every day of the year, <laughs> absolutely. Um, if someone particularly is interested in day of giving uh, and want to make a pledge for day of giving that's satisfied later, you know, we can work with them okay. on, on something like that. That's exciting stuff. I want to thank you. Uh, you're doing great things for the university, and the ultimate beneficiaries really are the students because that's what the school's here for, and uh, they, I'm sure, are very, very pleased with all your hard work. So thank you. Thank you, Pete. And it was great to be here. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again. I'd like to thank you all. We'll be, I'm Pete Holloway. We'll be seeing you next week. Hi, my name is Craig Bober. I'm a senior finance major at West Liberty University, and today I'm going to be showing you what it's like to be a part of this program. Heading to my first class of the day, Investment Portfolio Analysis with Professor Jesse. Uh, we're going to start off doing some current events, and then we're going to look at evaluating some stocks, figuring out the intrinsic value. We're going to do Knight, Tyson, Disney, and Waste Management. Uh, we need to make some investments with the Investment Club. The finance program at West Liberty is an exceptional experience. In the program, there are amazing teachers that always make class fun and engaging. A new student enrolling in the program should expect a personable learning experience when you're engaging in classroom activities and building relationships with your teachers and classmates. I chose the major in finance because of my interest in the finance world and my want to pursue a career in business. Uh, my goals after graduating are to become a certified financial planner and help people achieve their retirement and savings goals. Heading into my second class of the day, Management Capstone with Dr. Rakia. So part of what we've been doing over the last several weeks was looking at the internal and external factors of the companies that you had chosen to research. This major is good for others to consider because of the quality of education you receive and the relationships you build with the people in the business department. Uh, professionally with a finance degree, you have many different career options like banking, insurance, financial planning, or even tax services. I chose West Liberty University because I did not want to go far from home, but I still wanted to be away. Personally, what I like most about West Liberty is the great people that live here. West Liberty Business Program attracts many people from different countries, so this provides you with a unique and diverse learning environment being here. Be heading into the investment club meeting. Uh, so, as we talk about, here's our current uh, portfolio allocation. Um, so, we still have about $5,000 left, so we need to make some investments. The investment club is a student ran club that is sponsored by West Banco, where we use real money to buy stocks and bonds to build a class portfolio. Uh, this club is a great place to learn about the stock market and how investing works. All the decisions that we make regarding our portfolio are voted on by all the members of the club. Now for my last class of the day, my finance capstone with Professor Jesse. West Liberty's finance capstone is unique because it is a CFP board registered program, which is something that not all colleges offer. Uh, in this course, we learn about topics like ethics, retirement planning, tax planning, and risk management, which prepares us for the CFP exam. And now we're going to cap off the day with playing some basketball with my friends. Being a student athlete, there are many challenges that come with it, but the rewards far outweigh them. Uh, through my four years of playing football here, I learned many valuable life skills and have built friendships that will last a lifetime. Thanks for coming along with me today, and for more information, just visit our website.